There was a breast liver elder of the previous generation. His name was Rav Levi Yitzhak Bender. This Rav Levi Yitzhak Bender, he came to Uman, I think at the age of 14, 15, 16, something like that, in the year 1917, in the middle of World War One. He got on miraculously one of the last trains allowing people to go from Poland to Russia. While during World War One, the border was closed. They allowed this train to go through for people who needed to get back to Russia for whatever reason. And by miracle, by miracle this Rav Yitzhak Bender got on the train. He arrived, he arrived into Uman, and there he met the breast lover giants of that generation, in particular the one who drew him close the most, Rav Avraham ben Rav Nachman, his teacher, the one who brought him to the breast of teachings. And since then, Rav Yitzhak Bender, already as a teenager, began to get up every night at midnight. Chatzot, to dive, to dive into Hashem, to cry over the destruction of the temple, of the concealment of the tzaddikim, of the suffering of the Jewish people. And he continued doing this for, until the rest of his life. For the next approximately 70 years, 75 years, he continued doing this devotion of getting up, not missing a single night. He himself said that. He never missed a night of Chatzot. At the end of his life, he was asked, when you go up to heaven, what are you going to present to them as your greatest accomplishment in life? So he said, my greatest accomplishment is that I lived over 30 years in Russia and I still believe in God. Amazing. You would have thought that he would say that I got up and everything. He said that the tests of Amuna, of holding on to simple faith, were then and still are today in our modern day society so difficult that he said this is my greatest accomplishment that with what with everything that the kgb and the communists tried to do to wipe out and destroy jewish heritage jewish torah jewish tradition to destroy anything jewish any jewish identity they tried to destroy and he said i lived in this type of country for over 30 years and i still believe in hashem showing us this amazing point that this is the one thing that stays of a person and is the most important thing is your simple emuna. you can have a person who was one of the greatest torah scholars the greatest giants and everything what in the end is the backbone and the foundation and the most important thing that everything comes from that is that a person has simple emuna, straightforward emuna, and nothing pushes them away from that this is so important and just to sum off rav, rav nosen he will tell the story of the Rav of Bafalia. Bafalia was a Ukrainian village, and this Rav was a student or of the Magid of Mizrich or of the Baal Shem Tov. And this Rav, he was very holy and very involved in Torah and prayer all day long. He would be all day in Talit and Tfilin and learning and learning and learning. And then once on Yom Kippur, he had a difficulty in that he got what's called in the Halacha Bulmus. Bulmus is when a person's, when fasting, he begins to lose his sight. And Allah says that when this happens, a person is very in danger and he needs to eat immediately in order to nourish him, replenish him, and to restore his sight. And if not, the person's in danger of losing the eyesight forever and other dangers. So Allah says, even on Yom Kippur, if this happens to somebody, he must eat. It's a mitzvah to eat on Yom Kippur. So the Rav of Bafalia, he had a bumus and he was petrified. How in the world am I going to eat on Yom Kippur? He couldn't do this. So quickly he went into the side room of the shul. In this side room, on top of an, uh, an aron, a type of cupboard, there was what's called the matzahs of the Eruv Tchumin, Eruv Chatzirot. They had back then, they still exist today, that in one house you put an Eruv, a food item, and it joins all the houses in that section for Shabbat that they can carry from one house to the next, from one courtyard, Eruv Chatzirot, Eruv Tchumin, it's done in order for people to, to be able to, to, to move items on Shabbat in a place where there's no Eruv. So he saw nobody was looking. He decided to eat the matzah without anyone finding out. While he was eating the matzah of the Eruv, the shamash of the shul suddenly opened the door and walked in and he sees the Rav, this holy Rav, eating on Yom Kippur and not just eating, he stole the Eruv. So he quickly told people, the Rav of Befaya is eating the Eruv. And he got so broken 
this Rav of Bafalia, because of this lowly status that he was thrown into, that Rav Nosen writes, he became a kofer. He, he left the religion altogether. He left Judaism. He left the Judaism because he couldn't handle the crash that he went through. And Rav Nosen would say, if, but if he had the encouragement that we received from Rabbi Nachman, he wouldn't have dropped everything. Because Rabbi Nachman's encouragement is so strong that even as low and as broken a person may be, Rabbi Nachman teaches there's always hope, there's still hope. You have no reason to despair even after doing what you may have done, the worst the worst things, that you, atrocities that you could have done. Rabbi Nachman teaches so long as you are willing to start again, you are sincerely, sincerely and honestly with pure emuna, you want to get back and to start again, there's hope. And this is an important message. And this again, going back to Rabbi Yitzhak Bender, I lived in Russia for over 30 years, I still believe in God, because that emuna is the foundation for everything.